Hi, I'm a massive fan of the e-ink tablets because I don't like uh, writing on glass like on an iPad. I don't like reading off a computer screen. So I really want paper, but I want all the advantages of electronics. That's to say, if I annotate something, I want to be able to send it to somebody. I want to be able to file it so that I can find it again. So these e-ink tablets, I think, are a huge improvement for those who work with a lot of documents. So I've been using the Remarkable for a while. I'm now on to the second generation. So I think it's just uh, beautiful and it's compact and it's incredibly useful. But there's another one that's come out, which I thought might be a contender, which is the Cordono from Fujitsu. And uh, I just like to compare the two because all the reviews I've seen on the internet are just garbage. They're talking about how many megahertz the processor is, what version of Linux they use, whether it's a Wacom uh, stylus and all these things, which have no interest to me. I want to know which is the most useful, and which is most usable. So here goes. So the first thing to notice is the Cordono comes in two sizes. Here I've got the larger one, which is A4. Well, sort of A4. It's, uh, the screen is a little bit less than A4, but the, uh, the box is a little bit bigger than A4, or the Remarkable, which is uh, a little bit smaller, which, but only comes in one size. I actually find the Remarkable has the, absolutely the right size, so it's great for carrying. This is a tiny bit too big, but it, if you do have a lot of text on A4, I suppose this could be better. Uh, each of them comes with its own cloud solution, so you can sync with your PC and with your uh, phone. So this is what the uh, thing for the Remarkable looks like, and that's, uh, that's very nice and easy. You can do folders and send things and rename and etc. and download and import and export. And this is the one for the Cordono, which unfortunately you can already see doesn't work unless it's actually on. So you can't, unless the thing, your Cordono device is actually connected and live, uh, you can't actually do anything with it. But apart from that, when it is alive, it actually has a very nice interface uh, with a few quirks, which we'll get into in, in a moment. The Fujitsu has a pen, which, has, which is a bit curious. It's got this sort of flange, so you can stick it into the device. And it's got two buttons, so it's either a normal pen when you write, or when you click on one button, it actually erases, or the other one is, is a highlighter. The highlight is a bit curious in that you can only hide out PDF text. You can't just free flow uh, a sort of like a yellow marker anywhere and it only sticks to particular bits of the text. So that's a bit quirky, but it does have this one pen, which unfortunately also needs to be recharged. You need to pull off the top to, to, to recharge it. The Remarkable, by contrast, just has a static pen with no recharge and you just turn it upside down to do your erasing. I think that's a more elegant solution. On the subject of the pen, the uh, pen works uh, works nicely, nice and fluid on both, of course. Um, on the Cordono, you have to watch out that you hold the pen nice and vertical, because if you hold it like this, it starts not to work. That does work on the Remarkable. Uh, also, the Cordono doesn't have a pressure-sensitive thing, so you can't make fatter lines by pushing harder. Uh, you have to change the setting of the nibs. So those are things where I think the Remarkable wins. You also notice there are several menus because it thinks I'm now in landscape mode. It's got these several menu points here. So there's one menu here, which brings up the recent documents, which is nice. And there's another menu over here, which brings up a few things here about uh, uh, what, what you can do with the document. And there's a third uh, menu thing, which is a physical button at the top, which brings up uh, a lot of uh, sort of file management things. It thinks it's in landscape mode, so it's actually put everything into landscape, except for this menu, which is, uh, um, well, the, the button is on the left and the menu is on the top. So uh, it, it, even ignoring those quirks, I think it's a bit uh, annoying to have three different kinds of menu. I can never remember where you need to go to find which function. I prefer to have only one menu. And again, I think the Remarkable wins on that one. The Remarkable just has, uh, you just swipe down to get out of your document and uh, then there is a menu on the top left which gives you access to all the functions you need. I think that's much simpler. One thing that really attracted me to the Fujitsu was the scheduling function, the calendar function. I also do that on my Remarkable, basically copying my various electronic calendars, my paper calendars together on a day which looks like this, which isn't ideal. So this uh, sounded absolutely great. So you have a month view like this, where you can make an annotation that this whole week is taken, or you can go into a week view and uh, see what the week looks like. And you have a day view also and a year view and all these other things. Uh, so you can go 
and, and plan your whole day. Unfortunately, those three aren't synchronized. So if you go into the week view, you won't see what you annotated in the day and you won't uh, in the, the, the week and the day and the, uh, and the I can't even get back here, um, uh, are not synchronized. So I don't think that scheduler, it was a nice idea, but it needs to be implemented properly that the, what you put into each day view is actually then reflected in the week view. Another thing that really attracted me to the Kudono was the side-by-side -side mode. I think that's absolutely brilliant. So you can have half your screen for one document and half for the other one, and you can scroll them independently and annotate them independently and compare them. And I think that's absolutely super. This is something you really need and really works fantastically well on the A4 size of the Cordona. I think that'd be hard to do on the Remarkable because there isn't enough space, but that is an absolutely super function. The other bit that is really great is the zoom in. So you just uh, uh, do your fingers to zoom. You don't need to go into any menus and then you can zoom in and out. Um, and uh, that, that is also fantastic. Whereas with the Remarkable, you have to go into a menu to zoom in and out. One thing the Remarkable can do, which the Fujitsu can't, is to handle eBooks, so uh, EPUB format. So that's kind of nice. You, uh, you can just uh, uh, look at uh, various things that you get for free uh, on the internet, uh, documents and annotate them and send them, and that's, uh, that, that's, that's dead good. Uh, here it is syncing a little bit because I've downloaded a few new ones, but uh, that, that is super useful. The Fujitsu only accepts handwritten notes or, um, or PDFs. Okay, that about covers all the highlights. As you can see, I've noted down all the various bits and pieces I thought were good on each side, um, of course on the Remarkable. Uh, so let's just cover the last ones. Yes, there is handwriting conversion on the Remarkable, but I think that's more of a, a, a gimmick unless you write hello in capital letters, uh, it probably isn't going to translate your writing. If your writing is anything like mine, that's not going to work. But it's a nice gimmick. It's like the Apple Watch, which of course needs to be able to make you have a phone call, who's ever going to ask you, can you make a phone call with your Apple Watch? And you, then you can say yes, and then everything, everybody goes away. So this is just something they thought they needed to have. What I really like, uh, maybe I shouldn't promote this officially, is that there are some third-party extensions for the Remarkable. So you can get some pens from other people, you can get some cases from other people, you can even get a different operating system for other people, which um, uh, compensates for some of the deficiencies versus the Fujitsu. That's, of course, not official, so you do that at your own risk, but opening it up to third parties is obviously a good idea. Uh, the magnetic pen uh, is great, right? It just clicks onto the side. Uh, which is nice rather than Fujitsu where you need to find this little flange and slot it into the slot. I think that's um, that's definitely better. Oh, and the uh, um, Fujitsu is much lighter. I forgot to mention that. Although it's bigger, it's, uh, you know, it's not quite twice as big, but it's actually lighter. It only weighs about 250 grams, but it still feels quite solidly made. Uh, the remarkable for my taste is still the best made thing, but the, the Fujitsu is also beautifully made and, and, and nice and light. Um, there are some little details. With one of them, you can drag multiple files into your sync folder and the other one you can't. On the Remarkable, you can email the document straight from the document. You don't have to go back into the desktop software. Um, uh, the Cordona, of course, suffers a little bit from the fact that it comes from Japan. So most of the documentation is in Japanese, but using Google Translate and a bit of Nous, uh, you can work out uh, usually what, what you're meant to do. Um, the Remarkable allows you to manage your, your folders and your files all on the device. So you can move things into particular folders, create folders, move them around. Whereas with the Quadano, you can only do that on the desktop application. So I don't think that's so convenient, especially when they're on the road. The Quadano has a few things which are fun. I'm not sure whether anybody would actually want them. It's got an NFC functionality, so you can pair it with your phone and thereby connect to it that way. Or it actually has a Wi-Fi access point. So presumably if you don't have a Wi-Fi around you, you can, you're sitting in a train or an aeroplane, you can still synchronize your, your PC and your phone with, with your tablet. The, the Remarkable doesn't, doesn't have that. Another nice thing from the Remarkable is it has a folder on your PC which will synchronize automatically all documents that are in it with your device. That's rather nice. So rather than uh, dragging them across manually, you can have one sync folder. As for the price, uh, the Remarkable costs 399 plus 60 euros for a marker, and you'll probably also want one of the nice cases that they have. The Quaderno uh, comes in the large size and the small size. There you can see the price is about 
40,000 or 60,000 yen, you have to divide by 130. So that's, uh, yeah, it's a sort of similar price range. It's quite extortionate, both of them, but the amount of time you save because you don't have any more paper and you can find your paper and you annotate your paper and you, you don't have your all your clutter is, is just worth it every time, in, in my view. And you get some spare nibs, you can get a nice cover and you can get another one of these, these pens for, uh, uh, for another uh, 10,000 yen. So. So that's even more expensive than the remarkable pen. I think all main features have now been covered. Just to mention the Cordona has this lovely function of allowing to see your recently looked at files just with a push of a button and that's super useful because then you just jump back to your calendar or to your last document or your last three documents. The remarkable doesn't have that. I think that's a, that's a super useful little function. I also found the transferring of documents from my iPhone onto the device easier than with Remarkable. The, the, uh, the app summer seems to be easier to use and more responsive. Uh, having said that, on the Remarkable, there's a third party uh, hack on for the Mac that allows you to print any document from any application. You just print a Remarkable and it appears on your device, which is super useful. So as you can see, there are lots of pluses and minuses on both sides. For me, the Remarkable is still the winner. And when that comes out in color, I shall definitely be, be buying that. That's the thing I'm, I'm missing most. But they're both super devices, both a bit too expensive, no doubt. But if you're into e-ink and find that useful and productive, then you have to get to one of those. Just for a laugh, I actually printed out one of the documents on each. And this is what it looks like on the Quaderno with thinner and fatter. And this is what a document that was done on the Remarkable when it's printed out looks like. Again, I think the Remarkable just has the edge again. If you're going to be using this at all professionally, you might actually want a scanner. So people still send you this old thing called paper. You can actually digitize it and import it straight into the Cordona. There's a really big one you can see on the top and the middle. And there's also a portable one which you can take with you while you're traveling. And those are directly connected and integrated with the Cordona, which is kind of nice. The Remarkable doesn't have that. So I hope you like that little review, that little comparison of the two best devices, in my view, on the market for e-ink. And remember, these are not iPads, not uh, computers. I think any of them which actually integrate uh, Windows or have browsers on them are actually missing the point. The point of this is you are totally concentrated on what you're doing. It's paper only. There are no bleeps and alerts and updates and Facebook messages. You are totally concentrated on what you're doing. That is the point of e-paper, and those two have done it brilliantly. So, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do leave any feedback that you uh, uh, feel, anything that you feel I've missed. And thanks for watching.